things are sent to you from wherever you're sitting now. So today we want to talk about uh, one of our uh, mechanical stress. Okay. So first of all, I want to get your attention here. This is what you call a shaft. Okay. And we all know that a shaft is one of mechanical devices that transmit power. So that is a shaft. Okay. And uh, you see this is your bearing there. This is your other bearing that you have in there. That's, this is one of the keys. So I have one, two keys. So, and then here, your shaft is made in EN8 material, which we found under BS970. I think uh, 1983, okay? Or we can call it 08 and 40 material. It's EN8. All right, so what's happening here? Uh, we all know that EN8 has a uh, UTS. If it's normalized, if it's normalized and uh, under the limiting ruling section of 6 to 150 millimeters, okay, it has a UTS of 550, 550 MPA minimum, right? So meaning our material, if it's put under tension test, it needs to give a minimum of 550 MPA, right? And then they yield in MPA as a yield in MPA as a uh, two eighty MPA, right? And then the elongation percentage is 16%. Right. So this is what's happening. These people want to design a shaft. They want to use a shaft in their in their uh, uh, machine that they want to use with that or, or a device that they want to use. So they want to make sure that the material that they bought to manufacture the shaft is indeed EN8. So what they do is they proceed with the test. So this is what's going to happen. What happens is from the same batch, the same batch of material that was bought for EN, uh, uh, for the machining of this shaft, the designing of the shaft, they take one of the portion, a portion of that, which will be given to 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 to, to a metallurgical labs or a mechanical lab for testing. So here's how it comes. So let's say it's tested under uh, ISO 6892-1. Okay, that's one, which means it's a test, I guess, at room temperature. So more or less 21 degrees Celsius. So this is gonna, this is what's gonna happen. So under 6892, and then the machine is to 12 millimeter. Once you know the machine is 12 millimeter, you know how the tensile sample looks like for testing. It's like that. Come on, it's like this. Okay, so it's like that. So this is a sample that will be taken for testing. Okay, and then it's grabbed there. It's grabbed here. It's grabbed there. Okay, it's grabbed here. Okay, it's grabbed that side by the machine. So they try to pull it. Okay, they try to pull it vertically. Okay, or whichever direction. But one of the forces goes one way and the other one goes the other way. So I have a force F1 and a force F1 prime. Okay, so they, they try to pull our sample and to see how much fall is going to withstand before it breaks. Right, so we all know the graph of, uh, of tensile test. It goes like that and then bam, it breaks there. So here, what you're seeing there, what you're seeing here, this is the zone of elasticity. Okay, so when you're putting your sample, under the machine. So this zone here is the zone of elasticity, which means if you can remove the load, okay, while pulling, if you remove the load, the material can come back or the sample can back, come back at its original sizes. All right, I'm talking about the diameter, I'm talking about the length as well. Okay, so once it has reached that side, there, this part here that you call yield point, once it has reached the yield point, okay. So it's, this is the turning point to the zone of plastic deformation. So this is the zone of plastic deformation. So once it has reached that spot there, even if, and then it goes this side, even if you stop the machine, the sample won't be able to return to its original sizes or dimensions. And then it goes 
and then that that's what you call maximum load so this is the maximum load so this is the highest uh, force that this material can withstand before it breaks right so let's say in this case this machine was sunk according to the normalization of ISO 68992-1 it is as much into 12.58 millimeters so the dimension is 12.48 millimeters for our reduced section okay our reduced section so that is diameter so this is our sample and then it goes under test so while testing we realize that they this part D, the yield point is 44.28 kilo newton. 44.28 kilo newton. And then the maximum load day is 75, let's say 74, 74.93 kilo newton. All right. So that is the maximum load that this sample can withstand before it breaks. And then this is what's going to happen. For these people to confirm that they can go ahead with the machining of the shafts, okay? They need to make sure that after calculation, we don't know that when you have to get MPA, MPA is the unit of pressure, and then pressure means force over, uh, 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 over section or over area. So this is what's going to happen. When you try to pull the side, actually, you're trying to, to actually uh, reduce that port there. So if I can cut the section of that, I'm going to have thus. I can cut the section there. So you're trying to, to the pressure that you are putting, you are putting it under this portion here. So that portion. Okay. So what happens is the weakest part is the one that's gonna be attacked, is the one that's gonna be exposed. So when you're measuring the sample, you're measuring the smallest sizes because even if for your machine, it's not gonna, it does not mean that the whole section is the same size. You know, it might happen that. Your tool went through in on, on at, at one point and at the other point. So realize that the smallest size is 12.48. So we all know that if they have to get the area of 12.48, the area of 12.48, so the area would be um, 122.33 millimeters. We all know that the area equals to uh, d squared times pi over 4. Okay, so I get to 122.3 millimeters. So now this is what's going to happen. So if you have to get the UTS to confirm that this material is the same as what it says EN8, so what you do, you take the maximum force because UTS is ultimate tensile strength, so it's the ultimate, the most high tensile strength. So you take, so UTS equals to maximum load, so maximum load, that one over V, over the area so what i'm having here is 74.93 over 122.33 millimeters and i'm getting what i'm getting here is uh, 613 mpa 613 mpa so this one here is above is above the minimum which means the material in terms of the UTS is okay. So now that's not it. I need to make sure about the yield point. So now for the yield point, this is what's going to happen. So the yield point in MPA. Now I take the yield strength, the yield strength day, which is a 44.24.28 over 122.33. So if I have to calculate that one, so I'm getting 362. MPA. So this means that my material is fine. It is fine, but that's not it. Now I want to make sure about the, the, the ductility. Okay. And for the ductility, what I need to do, I need to get the extension. Remember, before you test, before you test this sample, it has a certain length, a certain length, which I name LO. So uh, initial length. So after you have tested it, it has elongated. It has elongated. Right, it has elongated, so it has get, it has gotten some other length besides LO. So here, this length is LO plus differential L. Right. So now, what's gonna happen is for me to get the percentage of the value of the percentage of elongation, I'm gonna take the differential L. So this one here, okay, multiply by hundred over LO. In this case, 
for uh, BS material, what you do is your initial L is given by 5.65 square root of the area. So, and now this is supposed to be, uh, I don't tell you how space here, but it's fine. This is supposed to be uh, 65 millimeters. So, let's say your elongation, your differential elongation is 18. 0.9 times 100 over 65 this gives me 19 percent 19 percent so which means then here it's 16 percent this material is 100 percent right so what's gonna happen is now they can take this material and go for uh 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 uh, uh for, for, for 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 machining they can machine the shaft they are okay but they need to make sure about the chemical test as well. They need to make sure about the hardness test as well. I'm talking about hardness the brinol, hardness brinol. Okay. So remember, a shaft undergoes a lot of uh, a lot of stress as well. I mean, as a lot of stress, which uh, among which are uh, shear stress, torsion stress, all of those. But in this point, I only wanted to focus on tension or tensile stress right so this is how it happens um and uh everything is done i hope i said everything all right cool so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and uh if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and uh if you like to share this video so that people other people might know because this is so good for engineers you know for technicians and for people who want to know more about how it happens you know how things are done in your life and all of those stuff so for now i'm gonna ask you to take care of yourself and uh, see you next time bye